Well, the directions are written on the top of the board in a very faint blue marker that I need to throw away. But basically, I need to find the values of A and of B. I don't know why I'm waving my hand like this. I need to find the values of A and B that will make this function differentiable at x equals negative 2. Okay, if a function is differentiable, it's continuous, which means this, okay? This would, I'm going to work this out as if it was a multiple choice question where I don't have to demonstrate all my work. So here it goes. Let's switch colors. Let's go with blue, but not that same blue. Um, I want this piece to equal this piece at x equals negative 2. So here goes. I want bx minus a to equal 1 fourth x squared plus b at x equals negative 2. That way the two function rules coincide at the same value. So what I'm going to do is take a negative 2 and plug it in. So I have negative 2b minus a equals 1 fourth times negative 2 squared plus b. And we'll just keep solving this. And now I'm not going to be able to finish it because I'm going to have an a and a b. We'll deal with that in a minute. But in the meantime, I have um, negative 2b oops, minus a equals 1 plus b. And yeah, that's what I have. I'm double checking the work that I'd done earlier. Let's solve for a variable. I think the easiest one to solve for is a. So we'll move a to this side. We'll move our b's to this side. That gives me negative 3b and minus 1. So negative 3b minus 1 is equal to a. There we go. We now have an expression for a that involves b. Once we know b, we can plug it in and find a. But here's the other part. We need to find, again, differentiability. We need to find where the slopes are the same. And again, I'm not treating this like it'd be a free response question where I'd show all my work and all that. Um, but I am going to show just a little bit. The slope from the left is going to be b. So the y equals the mx plus b, not the same b, but the, the slope is the number in front of x. This is the coefficient. So it's, it is the variable b. The y-intercept in this case is negative a. So what I want to do is check for differentiability or create differentiability by doing the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of bx minus a minus b times negative 2 minus a all divided by b, sorry, sorry, x, x, x minus negative 2. Trust me on this, you're going to end up with b. It's going to happen. Again, and here's why. There's your slope. We can continue to work this out if you like. It would be lots and lots of fun. Um, but trust me, it works. It's beautiful. You want to see it? Let's go fast. Skip this part if you want to. The limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of bx minus a plus 2b. Something's wrong. Something is wrong. Nope, it's not. It's not. Um, and then plus a. And then x plus 2. Here we go. We have the limit as x approaches. Sorry, something seemed very wrong for a second, but it's not. These a's cancel. And I have um, b, x plus 2 and then an x plus 2, and then x plus 2 is cancel, and I'm left with b. So, hey, it works. Fantastic. But here's the deal. I need the slope from the left, which is b, to match the slope from the right, which better equal b, but it's probably not going to equal b, so we'll force it to equal b, and then we'll set them equal to each other. Okay? Trust me on this. Here goes. The limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right, and now we're going to do that with this one, and it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So we're going to have 1 fourth x squared plus b, 1 fourth x squared plus b minus whatever I get when I plug a negative 2 in right here. So we're going to plug a negative 2 in right here. And actually, we figured that out in this context. 1 fourth x squared plus b, when I plug in a negative 2, it gives me 1 plus b. So let's just do that, okay? Let's just save ourselves a step. 1 plus b. I'm standing in the way, but there you go. That's it. That, th again, this is what I get when I plug a negative 2 in to this piece of the function. And then on the bottom, the denominator, I'll have x minus negative 2, so x plus 2. And we will continue to work this out. So we will have, this is a mess, the limit 
as x approaches negative 2 from the right of 1 fourth. Yeah, let's stretch this out an extra step. x squared, I was debating it. The b's will cancel. And then minus 1 over x plus 2. Some fancy factoring in the numerator. Stepping off camera here. We're going to factor a 1 fourth out of this numerator. And when I do, it's going to give me the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right, 1 fourth x squared minus 4. Because it's like 1 divided by 1 fourth, it's going to give me 4. Okay. And then I have x plus 2. And just to save myself a little bit of writing, I'm going to say that x squared minus 4 is really x plus 2 x minus 2, so that's gone now. And I can also cancel out the x plus 2's. Fun stuff. Okay, now I have the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right of 1 fourth x minus 2. Can I plug a negative 2 in now? Yes, and I will. Negative 2 goes here. And that is going to be negative 2 minus 2, so negative 4. 1 fourth times negative 4 is negative 1. Okay, here's the deal. I'm running out of board space. I know you're running out of room on your paper. I want differentiability. Continuity, differentiability. Continuity, differentiability. The two sides equal when you plug in a negative 2. The two sides have the same slope as you approach negative 2. One side approaches a slope of b, the other side approaches a slope of negative 1. Therefore, b equals negative 1. We're not done, but we're super close. If b is equal to negative 1, I can plug it in right here and crank out an a value. So let's do that. We're almost finished. I know what b is now. <clears throat> Switching colors here. So I'm using that equation down there, negative 3b minus 1, and that is equal to a. So 3 minus 1, so a is equal to 2. Done. We just found a, we just found b, we know what they are.